Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to make this, I, I call it Sharon the Shark. <laughs> I'll tell you the story. Um, it's because my sister's grandbaby's name is Sharon and she loves sharks. So my sister Angela asked me to, requested that I, I make a shark for baby Sharon. So this is my baby Sharon shark. Super cute. I'm not doing it in these colors. These colors were requested. So um, I actually have this gray color, which is, bought this at Michael's. So that's what it is. The color is light gray. Sorry, if you can see that. It calls for a 5.5, but I'm going to use a 5. It does not come in a cake. Uh, let me see if I can reach. I actually take my balls and I roll them into cakes. Let's get started. So, you're going to need to make... Oh, I'm not sure why I'm blurry here. Sometimes I think it's the light that blurs the camera, but I don't know. So you're going to need to make a magic ring. Put this down a little more. Kind of get away from the light. Through my window in my dining room. Sometimes I film at night and it seems to be better. So you can put eight single crochets inside this magic ring. So, Emma Gurumi requires, generally, a stitch marker because we work in the round, not not chaining, we're not doing that, any of that. So, um, you're going to put one single crochet in an increase into your circle. And I'll hard this first stitch. If this first stitch is hard to get into, you can just stick a needle in there and kind of manipulate it, pull up a bit, and give it a wiggle. Always struggle to get into the first stitch for some reason. So, one single crochet and an increase is your first round. So that's my one single crochet. And then your next is your increase. So that's just two single crochets in that space in the same stitch. So repeat. One single crochet, increase. So at the end of this you should have 12 stitches. took me forever to try to get this nose right when I was designing it, but I don't think I did too bad of a job. So you should end up at your stitch marker with your two, with your increase, your two in the same space. If you didn't, you're going to have to check your work. So your next two rounds is just going to be one single crochet in each of those 12 holes, 12 stitches. So you can count to 24 or you can just use your stitch marker. Either way, two rows, one in each space. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. You can pull your middle shut. So two single crochets and an increase. That's your first one. That's two and then your increase. So two in this space. So 
So one single crochet in that stitch, next stitch gets one single crochet, and the following stitch gets two. So one, one, two, one, one, two. All the way around, and at the end of it, you should have 16 stitches. So I had to add one for 16. I don't mind this yarn. This yarn is pretty good yarn. I don't think I've used it before. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. So there's one. Two. Three single crochets and your increase. Which is two in the same space. So... Repeat this all the way around. You should have 20 stitches at the end. Three single crochets. And then two in this space for your increase. So at this point you should have 32 stitches. So for the next five rows, you're going to put one single crochet into each. And I will meet you back on the other side. Alright, so I got my five rows done. You can put stuffing in this after you put your eyes on, but we're going to get our eyes just done and out of the way. So, you're going to have to pick the size of your eyes. This is what I have going on here. You can buy this at Amazon. No, they're not a sponsor of mine. But you can buy these at Amazon for 15 bucks. So, um, I think I did fairly small eyes before. I actually think those are too big, yeah. So I did these little 8mm eyes. Super important that you use safety eyes for making children's toys. That pack of eyes comes with the back, so for $15 it keeps your babies from choking. So I have between 11 and 12 rows is what I wrote down that I did. In here is where I did it. So you're gonna have to put them on and then you're gonna kinda have to take a step back and take a look, but um, I also wrote down they did 11 apart. So at this point you can put some stuffing in the nose. I wouldn't put it too far in because it might be difficult to hold. Oh, my eyes are not even. Yeah, see, there's no getting these off once you, uh, once you have them on there. My eyes are not even. I put one up higher than the other. That's great. That's fine. So your next round is going to be seven single crochets and an increase. So I've got my 11 rows done and I fixed my eyes. So they're even now. I just had to cut the back off and I just used these little scissors to do it. So you can actually I didn't think that you could get them off, but I just cut the back, literally, with my scissors and fixed it. So my eyes are now even, which is good because it helps kind of conform the head in that area and gives this little, it just helps. So now that your 11 rows is done, this is what it should look like. Not much like a shark, but 
we're going to start decreasing. So I want you to do an eight single crochet decrease. For this round. So that's one. That's eight. And then your decrease is going to the stitch, grab some yarn, pull through to stop. Don't do anything. You have two loops. Go into the next stitch, grab some yarn, pull through. You should have three loops. You're going to yarn over and go through all three loops. That's your decrease. And then you're going to repeat that all the way around. And at the end, you should have 36 stitches. And then after that, you can do two rows of just single crochets. I will put my screen up so you know what you have to do. And I will meet you back after all of that. So I'm going to put some stuffing in mine. So if you're stuffing yours, make sure that you're pulling it apart from whatever, whatever you're getting it out of a bag or whatever you're getting it out of. Just so that you don't get a bunch of clumping. So I like to spread mine out like this. I know it's hard to see. And then that hole that I've created, I like to put stuffing in there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stuff it very full right now. But um, that's how I like to do it. So the outside, you've got all the stuffing that you've pushed with your fingers to the outside, and then you're just shoving down through the middle. So that you get a nice smooth feel. So your next row round the, are going to be seven single crochets and a decrease, which will give you 32 stitches, and then your two rows of single crochets. I'm trying to keep this video short can be quite long so again I'll put my pause screen up and I'll meet you on the other side so your next rounds are going to be six single crochets and a decrease and then Again, the same thing, two rows after that, two rows of one single crochet in each of the 28 stitches that you should have after you do your decrease. So six single crochets and a decrease and then two rows of regular and I will meet you on the other side. Alrighty, your next row is going to be five single crochets and a decrease. And after you're done that, you're going to have 24 stitches. Um, and then you're only going to do one single crochet row. You're not going to do two. You're just going to do the one. That's my five single crochets. You have to count this one as a one. I can't stress that enough. And then your decrease. So repeat that and I'll see you on the other side of the pause screens. So I just put some more stuffing in my shark. So hopefully your stuffing as you're kind of going along here. So your next rounds uh, 
are going to be four single crochet and a decrease so that takes you down to 20 stitches after that and then you're going to put one single crochet and those 20 stitches so again I'll put my pause screen up and I'll see you on the other side Alright, your next rounds are going to be three single crochet and decrease and then one single crochet after that. You should have 16 stitches when you're done and I'll meet you on the other side. So your next rounds are going to be two single crochets and a decrease. So that'll take you down to 12 stitches and then you're going to do 8 rows of one single crochet in each stitch round. Then we'll continue to decrease. So that's the first one, your stitch marker, that's the second one and your decrease. And repeat. So you should have 12 stitches and in those 12 stitches I want you to put one single crochet in each for the next 8 rows and I'll see you back here after. So I'm done my 8 rows, that was pretty pretty quick and I was just kind of stuffing along the way because you kind of have to. So your next row next round is it's getting harder and harder to hold on camera so your next round is going to be one single crochet and a decrease so pretty quick since we don't have too many stitches left So, you should have 8 stitches, we're going to do 1 single crochet in each stitch, so you can just count to 8, you don't need your marker really. That's eight. I'm going to shove some more stuffing in there before it gets any smaller. Because you're going to want stuffing for the very, very tip too. So you're going to have to put enough in there that when it's closed you can push back down a little bit. So that you can put the stuffing in the tip. We do need it in the tip to be able to sew decently. So our um, fins on. So jam it down there enough that you can squeeze some of that back up when we're done. So then this is just going to be decrease four times and then you can fasten off and sew, sew the rest shut if there is any to sew shut. But. and four. So you can just go into the next stitch, do a slip stitch, fasten off. Now there is just a tiny 
crisscross so that you got to do here. But it is not much. The reason I cut off such a long tail is because I like to weave significantly into my piece. So there's not much here to sew up. So you're just going to go in this stitch and out that stitch. And you're just going to do that a couple times. Go in and then out and then you can just pull. I want too big of a point so you got to squeeze that a stuffing into your tip. So try to get it down there as much as you can. And then you can just go down and around to kind of pull that point down like this. You really don't want that pointy. So give it a nice tug. So that gives it a more rounded rounded look for sewing on the, the fins. And then you can just weave in and out different directions so that if it was to come undone it's got different directions it needs to to go in order to pop open and then I'm just going to tie a knot cut a little bit off and then you can just poke that right down inside your stuffing. And there, we've got the body done of Cher and the Shark. And next, we'll be doing fins. Alright, so we're going to make these tail fins. And hopefully I'm going to sew them on better. I didn't sew them on very good here. And we'll see if I can't do a better job with this guy. So you're going to need a magic ring. And put four single crochets inside that magic ring. In each of those four stitches, you're going to put one single crochet. Now you're going to have to turn this right side in, which is not an easy task. But if you get it so far, you can just use your hook to do the rest. Turn it all nice and through to the other side. So get your stitch marker, which I seem to have lost mine. I'm going to use another one. So this looks like that's your first stitch, but you're actually in your first stitch. So you got to go all the way over to this guy. Just because it's such a small area. That's why it looks like that. So put your one single crochet in there and your stitch marker. And we're going to do an increase. So your next stitch, which is all the way over here, you're going to put two single crochets in there. Your next stitch, you're going to put one single crochet. And your next stitch, you're going to put two. The reason I do this, and as difficult as it seems, is because I want a point. And doing it this way puts a point on it. 
so my middle opened up a little bit so I'm just gonna with it stuck on my hook I'm just gonna pull my middle closed again so it shouldn't come open a third time so that's what you got so far as this little nubby your next row is going to be two single crochets and an increase so you're going to go into this you have six stitches or so yeah you got six stitches because we started with four so you got six stitches to work with so and this first one you're going to just going to go one second stitch you're going to do one so it's two single crochets and then your increase so this stitch will get two single crochets in the same space and repeat single crochet single crochet and then two single crochets in this final stitch and again you can just keep doing this to keep reshaping it since you're, you are kind of squishing it around so you have eight stitches now and I want you just to put one single crochet into those eight stitches for this next round. If you don't have eight, this is where you can correct the situation. So I can either add or subtract here. So your next row is going to be three single crochets and an increase. That's number one. Three single crochets and your increase. Two single crochets in the same stitch and repeat. And right at the marker should be the end of your sequence, which was two single crochets in each stitch. So you can start putting stuffing in this if you want to, just so it stops collapsing on itself. I usually shove a, just a tiny wee bit in here because I get tired of fixing it. And I kind of get tired of this guy. So I just take my fill and I take my string And I push it all down inside so it stops annoying me. So you should have 10 stitches and I want you for this next row just to put one single crochet in each of those 10 stitches. So your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. That's number one. So for the next two rows, you're just going to put, you should have 18 stitches. So for the next two rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in those 18 stitches. So once you have your two rows done, uh, you can just fasten off and stuff it.
So with enough to sew decently with, So you can also go into this next stitch and pull your yarn through to the other side and give it a pull. It kind of evens it up a little bit. <clears throat> so, kind of little bit of stuffing in there. It doesn't have to be a whole bunch. So I've got both of them stuffed where they look just about even. And I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to sew where I fastened off where I fastened off. I think I'm going to sew just a couple of stitches together like that. And then I'm going to put it on the tail and sew the rest. I hope that works out. So one of these strings I don't need. This is the shorter one, so I'm going to stick this down in here. I don't want to cut it off because I don't want to really risk anything. I mean, I can cut some of it off. So I'm just going to jam that down in there. Now, if you follow me at all, you know I don't sew well. So this may or may not go as planned. I need just a bit more stuffing. So I'm going to put my two ends together that I fastened off with. And I'm just going to go stitch for stitch here. And I'm only going to do just a couple stitches together. And it's just going to be a whip stitch. tight. I'm going to do a third stitch. Sorry, somebody really needs to get a hold of me, apparently. So, I'm going to do a third stitch. I will see. I still might have too much. Learn to turn your ringers off. Yes. So, <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work. I thought it was going to make it easier on my life, but or make it look better. So it's going to be hard to show you. I'm just going to go about my... So I'm going to go down into this stitch, and I'm going to grab some of the shark. And I'm going to come up into this stitch. I really just want those together like that. That's how I want it. In a perfect world, that's what it looks like in my mind. It's not working out too bad. Yeah, that might look better than what I initially did in the first place. Hopefully yours is looking okay. So at some point we're just going to end up just doing the tail. But now that I've got it kind of on there, I'm just going to come down and do the one tail around and then just come back up. So I'm going to do invisible stitches just because it looks better. So you go ahead and sew yours on and I'll meet you right back here. 
So once you come around and you've got your tail done and it's complete, whatever you have left, which I don't have much left, but you can just weave in a little bit. I'm not going to have much to weave in, so I'm just going to do my knot that I normally do. I would normally do anyway. And uh, poke it down inside. That doesn't look too horrible. Uh, so next, we're just going to do these tiny little fin fins here that are at the back. So that's the tail. And sharks have these tiny little fins here. So those are going to be the next ones that we do. They're so quick. So we might as well get them done. So you're going to do a, a magic ring. So you can put four single crochets into your magic ring. My stitch marker. So this one we're going to do an increase right off the hop. So we're going to do one single crochet and an increase, if I can get into that. Stitch. So one single crochet, next stitch gets two single crochets for your increase. It's so hard to hold on to. The next stitch gets one single crochet. And the last stitch gets two. So we can flip this around. So again, once it's on my hook, I like to just pull that center a little more securely so it won't pop open. So you should have six stitches and your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of those six stitches. So you just count to six. You don't have to use a stitch marker. And that's my six. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. So there's one single crochet. There's two single crochets. And your increase. And again, one single crochet. Two single crochet and an increase. So you should have eight stitches and that is our fin. We're not stuffing this guy. This guy's not getting stuffed. The only thing we're stuffing it with is the tail. So you can go into the next stitch and you can pull this sucker through. We're just going to sew it up. All 
Alrighty, so sewing these suckers on, you're going to have to determine where they go. So I stared at a picture of a shark for the longest time. So they go somewhere in this area. So it's all up to you um, where you want to put them. But um, these are not easy to sew on either. I actually literally just kind of went in and out this way because it was quite difficult so I just go back in the same hole I just came out and I come up as close as I can to the fin but I don't go into the fin until I'm right there then sorry it's hard to show you on camera then I go into the fin like that and then back out somewhere And then when I pull, I hold the fin in place. So it's going to be right about there. And then the other one's going to be here. So it's going to be not easy to match them up. Actually, I didn't have a problem with these ones. I had a problem with these fins here, matching them up, trying to get them even. So anyway, I go back in the same hole. Come out near the fin, but not in the fin. This is just my way. You don't have to do my way. Tie your knot, but you don't have to bother. Weaving it generally is perfectly fine. I'm just super duper cautious because I got babies to worry about. So go ahead and sew your other one on and I will meet you back here and we'll continue. All right, so I've got my two, whatever these fins are called. Um, the next thing we're going to do is um, the underbelly, which is white. So that's what it looks like. All sharks have a white underbelly. So get your white. We're going to build this flat, so I mean, there's going to be new magic ring. It's going to be a slip knot, though. The so slip knots can be done in many different ways. I guess I, just, I didn't even show you. So, the way I do a slip knot is I will wrap it, I'll cross them when I wrap, and then I just pick this guy up and I grab the guy under it and I pull him through so let me do that slower and I take my finger out and I pull so that's how I do a slip knot going to chain two in this first stitch we're going to put two single crochets pull your slip knot chain one and turn So in these two stitches, you're going to put two single crochets in each of those two stitches. Oh, I did not get under both pieces of yarn. Make sure for this, you get under both those pieces. Such a pain in the butt, this stitch. The struggle is real. Anybody else struggle with this stitch or is it just me? Like, you have no idea how much I hate this stitch. Now that everything's all out of shape.
So you're going to do two single crochets in the first stitch, two single crochets in the last stitch, and then regular stitches in between. So we're going to do our increases. So two single crochets in this stitch. There's a single crochet, one single crochet in this one, and then this last space gets two, and again, only grabbing one piece of yarn. Two single crochet is very difficult, like in that one. Chain one, turn your work. So for the next five rows, you're just going to do one single crochet in each of these six stitches. Chain one and turn. So do that four more times and I'll see you back here. So I've done my five rows. That's about as much as you get. It's not big. So um, I'm going to do another increase row. So two, two single crochets in the first stitch and the last stitch and then single crochets in between. There's my two singles. And then I'll just do a single crochet in each stitch till I get to the last stitch. And then I'm going to put two single crochets into that last stitch. Chain one, turn my work. Now I just do regular crochets, just one in each stitch, all the way across. That's eight. Chain one, turn your work, increase, so two stitches in the first stitch, one stitch in every stitch in between until you get to the last stitch. And this last stitch gets two single crochets. Chain one, turn your work. And repeat. Two single crochets in the first, single crochets all the way through. Until you get to the last one. And two single crochets in this last stitch. So you should have a total of 11 stitches across. Chain one, turn your work. For the next four rows, you're going to put one single crochet into each of these 11 stitches for four rows, and I'll meet you right back after. So the next two rows are going to be increase rows. So you're going to put two single crochets in the stitches on either end of your piece and then one in the middle. So for the next two rows, you're going to do the exact same thing. So two in the last stitch, two in the front stitch. Chain one, turn your work, do the exact same thing for the next round. Well, 
once you're done that for the next six rows you're just going to put one single crochet in each stitch so this is what I've got so far the next two rows are going to be increased rows so you're going to put two single crochets in the very first stitch, two in the last stitch, and singles all the way across. And two in your end stitch, chain one, turn your work, do it again. And two in the last stitch. So it looks funny, but it's supposed to look funny. So for the next five rows, you're going to do one single crochet in each stitch, and I will meet you back here. So for the next seven rows, this is what you should have so far. So the underbelly is going to start right about there. So we're going to start decreasing Went down a bit, right about there. So we're going to decrease. The next seven rows are going to be, every single row is going to be a decrease row. We're just going to bring this in like this. Sorry, we're going to bring this in like this. So, for the next seven rows, you're going to decrease every single row. So your decrease is going to be, the first two stitches are going to be two together regular stitches all the way to the last two stitches and then crochet those two together so that's your decrease you're going to do that for every single row for the next seven rows So I'm on my last two, so I'm going to go in and grab one. I'm going to go into the next stitch and grab one. You should have three loops, and you're going to pull through all three. And that's what you're going to do for the next six rows now after this. Seven, seven rows all together, but we just did one. So this is what you should have at the top. It's like three stitches at the top. That's all you have left. At this point you can fasten off and you're going to need to sew it on so obviously you're going to need a super long sewing tail. So get your shark. You may have to pin them in a few places. So figure out where you want it. 
try to leave room here for the mouth. And that's what I did right about there. You have to definitely pin in. So once you're pretty sure you've got it on the bottom, we can start sewing. So I'm going to do invisible stitches because I don't want to see even a pull of a stitch. So I'm going to sew literally into the white. So I've come back around and I haven't weaved in or anything but um, you can just go into the white and weave back and forth. You don't have to be overly serious about going into the shark but I mean you can. You can go down into the belly right here through the white. So we'll get on to making our fins. I've got the two, two side fins and then the one on top. So we're going to do the two side fins. Do you need your gray? Oh, make a magic ring and put four single crochets in the center. I want these suckers to be pointy. I managed to lose my stitch marker again. So because we want them to be pointy, our next round is going to be one single crochet in each stitch. Make sure you're getting under two pieces of yarn. And my last stitch. And then you can turn this sucker right side in. Difficult, but manageable. So again, we're just going to use the end of our hook. Pull on, pull down on this for your center so you, that you can close that up. So let's start, oops, start increasing. So go into your first stitch and put a single crochet with your stitch marker. Second stitch is going to be two single crochets. Next stitch is going to be one single crochet and then your last stitch will be two single crochets. So that should give us six stitches. Your next round is going to be one, one, two. There's one single crochet. One single crochet. And then two single crochets. And again, one. One, 
And this final stitch gets two for your increase. So you should have eight stitches. I'm just gonna reshape this a bit. Just for me squishing it. Your next round is gonna be three single crochets and an increase. So that's number one. Number two and three. And then your increase. So two stitches, two single crochets in this stitch. And repeat. One, two, three, and then two single crochets in this last stitch. So you should have 10 stitches now all together. The next round is going to be one single crochet in each of those 10 stitches. So to make it easier to hold, I can put some stuffing in here. And it does get quite awkward, especially when it keeps collapsing on itself. So I just like to just shove some stuffing down there. Doesn't have to be a whole lot. So once you got enough stuffing down there where it's a little easier to hold, we can carry on to four, four single crochets and an increase. And we could have shoved that down there too and I didn't even think about it. Anyway. Here's one. Two. Three. Four and two in this stitch so you can do it again one two three four and then two in this stitch you should have 12 stitches all together Next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. So we're going to keep doing this all the way to 11. Single cro crochets and an increase. So for time constraints, um, I'm going to put it on my pause screen, what you have to do. And then you can fasten off and build your other one. Alright, so I'm done my other one. I'm just going to go into the next stitch. I'm going to slip stitch. I'm going to fasten off. I'm going to fasten off with a sewing tail. Go into the next stitch so I can pull this through. Then I'm going to pull that over. So, it's very wonky. It's not going to be easy to sew the top shut, but you don't have to be all that pleasant about it. You can just pull up on that. And you can shape it any way you want. So you get that weird shape. So, don't overstuff these. 
just stuff them enough. Does that make sense? No. Probably not. So my battery's going to die again, so that's probably going to cut out. So try to match the top as much as you can. It's kind of, it's kind of wonky, but... It's also pliable. It doesn't have to be pretty. So I'll do the same thing to the, your other one. I'm going to change my battery and I'll meet you right back here. Oh, I've got my tube ready. I just don't have my shark ready. I started the camera before I was ready. So, set that guy aside. So this is going to be very difficult. Not to sew on, but to get even. So once you decide where you're going to put this guy, um, it's going to be very difficult to even that up. So if you look at a picture of a shark, their fins are still fairly decently back. We're just going to start by going into the fin and then into the shark. And pop it out somewhere. Oh, I did put my needle out. Starting off great. Starting off great. So, once I figure out where I want it, somehow I have to figure out how to stop it from moving. And I don't know if that's going to help. I struggled with it before. But, the same way I sewed these on, was how I sewed this on. Which is why I've got a very long piece. So, where I came up, I went back down the same hole. And I came up right next to the fin. And then I went back down into the fin. And I popped out somewhere. So, it doesn't have to be far away like I just did up here. So when I pull, I'm going to really hold that fin into position when I pull. So, again, like I said, this is the easy part. Sewing the fin on. It's the, uh... It's the trying to get them matched up. That's the hard part. So, I'm almost certain mine are even. <laughs> Not so bad. <laughs> so, one more fin. And we're done. So, we're going to do the top fin. The dorsal fin. So, you need to make another magic ring. You're going to put six single crochets inside this ring. So this is where it gets weird because it's me, first of all. So you can do two single crochets and an increase once. So there's one. Better put a stitch marker in there. 
There's one in a stitch marker. There's two single crochets. And then the next stitch gets an increase. Two single crochets in the same space. Then you're going to do two half double crochets and an increase. I know, this sounds weird, but trust me. So in your next stitch you're going to do a half double crochet. The next stitch you're going to do one half double crochet. And then this next stitch, the last stitch, you're going to put two half double crochets into that space for the increase. So you should have eight stitches all together. You can turn this the right way now, pull your center. So we're going to do this throughout the whole thing. You'll see why after. So your next stitch is going to be three single crochets and an increase. So your next stitch is going to be one single crochet. Sorry, I was talking with that in my mouth. The next stitch is going to be one single crochet. Next stitch is going to be one single crochet. So that's three single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in that stitch. Then we're going to do three half double crochets and an increase. So your next stitch gets a half double crochet. The next stitch gets a half double crochet. The next stitch gets half double crochet. And then your final stitch at the marker gets two half double crochets. So I should have ten stitches at this point. And I gotta turn it again because it flipped back around on me. Alright. Your next round is gonna be four single crochets and an increase. So there's one, there's two, four single crochets, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. Then you're going to do four half double crochets and an increase. So next stitch gets a half double crochet. Next stitch gets half double. Next stitch gets half double. Next stitch gets half double. So that's four half doubles. And your increase. So two half doubles in the last stitch. Next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. So that's number one. That's five single crochets over a course of five stitches. And then your increase is two single crochets in this space. So now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it with half double crochets. So five half doubles, one in each of the five next five stitches. And then your last stitch gets the increase of two half doubles. Your next round is going to be six single crochets and an increase. So there's one. Got six single crochets and then two single crochets in the same space for your increase. Then you're going to do six half double crochets and an increase. So the next stitch gets one half double. 
next stitch gets one half double, so on and so forth. And the last stitch at the marker gets two half doubles for the increase. So next round is going to be seven, seven single crochets and an increase. So there's number one. At seven single crochets and then two single crochets in the next stitch for your increase and now we're going to do seven half double crochets and an increase That's seven half double crochets and then two half double crochets in the final stitch. So do you see what, where I was going with this? We needed a slanty dorsal fin because that's how they are. So your next two rows just can be one single crochet in each stitch around. Then you can fasten off and sew your top shut. You're going to put some stuffing in it. So you should have 18 stitches. So the next two rows are going to be one single crochet in each of those 18 stitches for two rows and I'll see you back here. So I've done my two rows and just uh, cutting my sewing tail pulling through and then of course pulling through so you get the idea that it's turned a little bit that was what that weirdness was all about so let's put some stuffing in this bad boy. It actually takes more than you think. So while you're stuffing it, you can also try to keep the shape. Keep it bent a little bit. So you want to sew it together like this so that you get this it coming this way. Do you get do you get what I'm saying? But if you did everything right, that's where your your yarn's gonna come out anyway, so dorsal fin points that way so it needs to be curved back toward the tail and if you look at the pictures of uh, a shark a dorsal fin actually sits back here which is where I sewed the last one so part way between the wings that's actually where the dorsal sits which is odd to me because I thought it was up here until I looked at the pictures. So it is just a kid's toy. You can do whatever you want. Sew it wherever you want. But that's actually where the shark's fin is. Normally. So 
All right, that's my fin. I've got a bunch of divots in here that I gotta just kind of pop up and play with, but uh, the final thing, the final thing, is we gotta put a mouth on this guy. So I just did a mouth like this. Um, I just wanted it to really just show on the sides, which it does. It just only shows on the side. So I'm using something a little bit different than um, what I used. I just used a piece of yarn. This is a piece of yarn, but it's um, it's only two weight cotton yarn. So that's what I'm going to use for the mouth. Just something super duper skinny. You can use whatever you want. You can do whatever you want with your mouth. You don't have to do what I'm doing with my mouth. But if you are going to follow me then, I'm going to tie a knot at the end of this. Actually, I'm going to tie a double knot at the end of this. Because this is going to get jammed down inside the shark. So that his mouth doesn't fall off. It can be hard to show you on camera. So you can go in anywhere you want. Um, I'm just going to go. Let's see. I want the mouth like that. So you can go in wherever you want. Pop out. So I'm about two stitches. I'm the third stitch from the top. Well, not quite the top, but. I don't know, it's hard to explain to you. So I'm going to go into here. And I'm going to go back out that, oops. Back out that same hole. So then I'm going to go back down the same hole. <laughs> and I'm going to go straight across try to get it straight across into the third stitch from the end so it's even oh that's not one two oops get over there the third stitch from the end so that your mouth is even And then from there you can go down this hole and then out that hole that you just came down in. So that's how I did my mouth. So from the side, ignore that. So from the side, it's just a little smiley mouth. This stuff is fragile. So Go back in the same hole. You want to just pop out some. You just want to take this somewhere else. So we'll just take it up there. So there's. Well, I'll show you after. So tie a knot or a double knot if you can, depending on what you're using. So if you're using regular thread, you can probably just tie a regular knot. I'm using some very very thin <laughs> cotton yarn. If you're using a four weight yarn, then you probably don't need to. So tie a knot and then poke your guy down. So if somebody happens to want to pull on his mouth for whatever reason, then the knot should catch the stuffing and not come out. So your starting knot, just poke that guy down in there too. And that's all I did for that. So from the side, it just looks like a smiling shark. Now keep in mind, I made this for a little baby, so. And that's the other side. And that is it. That is it for my shark. So, thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.